Okay. Hi, everyone. It is Marilyn Alori, and welcome to a special edition of Who Can It Be Now? The podcast, as you all know, it's a podcast by now. I am bringing something really exciting to the podcast. Um, I'm doing hot seats today. And the reason why I'm doing these hot seats is because I've been really observing how people are running businesses, how people are selling their product. And I'm really starting to get annoyed by it all, to be honest with you. I'm feeling like a lot of people out there are selling their products in a way that I don't feel is in integrity. And it's starting to get me a little bit annoyed and riled up, and which is not unusual for me. I am definitely Italian, Sicilian, and from Brooklyn. So it doesn't take much sometimes to get me riled <laughs> up. But the thing that I'm enjoying, the thing that I'm noticing and enjoying also about it is really having a voice for a lot of people I feel who need a voice right now. I tend to get a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs in my business. And because of that, the, the, the thing that I've noticed the most is people will sell processes, marketing tools. And I think all of that is very important when you're thinking about opening a business or starting a business. But the thing that's the most important is to believe in what you're about to offer, to believe in yourself. And it's not that you're going to come out of the gate going, okay, I'm doing readings. I believe in it. I believe in it. I'm going to do it. You get the feeling of, okay, I'm going to, I believe in myself. I'm going to do readings. But in order to really grow the muscle of completely believing in yourself, you have to do it. And as you're doing it, there's, there's something that happens inside of you where you start like learning about yourself and you're going to hit the wall and you may make mistakes or you may stumble, or you may fall, but that doesn't mean that you give up. And I really want to start getting into a place where I teach you guys how to run a business from the inside out. And that requires all things that requires mindset that requires knowing what to do when somebody gives you a bag, a bad review or something like that. And how, how you deal with it within yourself. It's also noticing how to do sales systems and how to sell your product. You can't sell your product if you don't believe in what you do. And again, there's a little bit of a catch 22 there, because if you have a new product that you're just putting out and you haven't validated yet, and you don't really know what people's results are, how do you sell a product when you're not really sure what people are going to, are going to experience with it? And my answer to that is you have to believe in it first and foremost yourself. It doesn't mean that you don't go out. When I go out and I'm getting ready to validate a product, I will sometimes, one, my audience, my con consumers, my customers, my clients, my students, my community are letting me know they need it just by the conversations we're having. I can tell, oh, there's a need. But if you don't yet have a client base or an audience or um, um, I hate saying audience, I just don't like that community, you may not know. And one of the first ways you can know if a product's going to be validated is to start with one-on-one -on -one stuff and starting to talk to people. You can even just talk to people that you think it would be right for, get on the call with them, and you start validating the product through conversation. And then you have to believe in what you're doing, your mission behind it. And then you go out with the product. And the thing that there's, this is going to sound like a little bit of a mishmash right now. And I promise that it'll get more streamlined as I do more of these. The thing that gets to me though, is when you're going out and you're selling a product and maybe you're studying marketing and you're studying sales, or you're studying different types of techniques and tools, how to create a course, how to put a course out there. You have to believe in yourself. You really have to understand why you're doing what you're doing. Where's the passion? What's the inspiration? Because you're going to have moments where somebody is not going to like you. You're going to have moments where somebody is going to, you're going to be in a reading and the person's going to be sitting there all with their arms crossed like, nope, nope, nope. That's going to happen. And you have to be able to really stand and anchor in your own truth, your own heart and soul in those moments. So what I want to start teaching people is maybe not only giving you tips and techniques for, for sales systems and marketing and business tools, but I really want to get you to anchor into your passion, why you're doing what you're doing, how to do it, how to get it out there. Because I see too many incredible spiritual entrepreneurs staying in the closet. They don't know how to get started. And then they'll go out and they'll take a course from um, somebody who teaches marketing and there's a lot of great people out there and there's a lot of crappy people out there, but they'll go and take a class about marketing and they'll be told, okay, go post on Facebook. And then they freeze in their tracks because they're not ready yet to be seen and heard. And then they'll post something on Facebook and they'll sit there and wait until somebody likes it. And my whole thing is, I want you to learn how to put your message out there without needing the likes or the loves. And eventually that happens. And the other thing that happens is when you build a business from the inside out, 
when you actually come to your business from your heart and soul, you attract the right client. So I just jumbled in a bunch of stuff there. And we have a couple of guests with us today that I'm going to be putting in the hot seat. This is work that I do in my program called Next Level Living. Next Level Living is where my heart and soul, of course, membership for your soul, my heart and soul is in there too. But Next Level Living is where I get to deep dive mentor people. And we have somebody on today who is from that program. But I, I invited people on to get into the hot seat so I could show them how I coach. And one of the things that I, I want to share with you guys today, I want to see, I want to check in with them real quick to see if what they picked, what was their big takeaway from what I just said. So get ready, you guys, because I'm going to ask you that. Because I know I just threw a bunch of stuff in there because I'm very passionate about the fact that I don't want people getting shut down before they even get started. I, I just see so many spiritual entrepreneurs with incredible gifts, not even knowing what to do at that gave frozen in their tracks. And then it really, really, really does come down to self-worth. So we're going to play today. And we only have a couple of people on the call today. And I'm going to be doing more of these and testing them out, see how they go. Because like I said, I do this in next level living. I, I coach people this way. And I want to see how this goes and how the takeaway is for all of you and what you learn from it. And then what I'd love to hear from all of you is if there's something you want to learn business-wise, email me at care at marilynalori.com. I'm not going to personally in, in, um, respond to that. If I feel that it's an incredible subject matter, I will bring it to the podcast so that everybody can benefit from it. But if there's something that you're struggling with business-wise, I want you to email me at care at marilynalori.com so I can start bringing it to the conversation here on who can it be now. All right, so we have Mary and Irene with us. So now I just said a bunch of stuff to the two of you. Before we get into the hot seats, what was, we'll start with you, Irene, because you showed up mm -hmm. first today. What was something that really struck you or maybe it, maybe it gave you another question? Just what kind of, what would you like to say in response to what I just said? Well, the believing in yourself and creating something that you truly believe in um, hits a chord with me because um, I know that I have gifts because people come to me all the time and they have for pretty much my entire life. And the thing for me is that because I have um, helped people and coached people and read people pretty much my whole entire life, to me, it's normal. Mm -hmm. And so I start to go in my head and go, well, I don't really have anything to offer because this is just normal. And so I get into that mindset and, but then I have these people who are like, oh my gosh, that helped me so much. Or, oh my gosh, this, and, or, oh my gosh, that. And you're really good at this. And I'm like, I am, what, what did I do? <laughs> so, so for me, it's kind of getting over that whole, well, this feels normal to me. Therefore, I don't really have anything outstanding to offer to someone else. And I have to get out of that mindset and realize that just because it's normal to me doesn't mean it isn't extraordinary to someone else. Great. Great. So. That's really great. I love that. Um, when people tell you you're really good at it, how do you receive that? I receive it pretty well now. It's taken me years mm -hmm. to really grasp that. You know, because I used to have, I, well, I still do. I would have friends that would text me and they would ask me, what are you sensing about this? And my first response would always be me wanting to say, how the hell should I know? But then I just start, it just starts going. It just starts yeah. coming out. And then they're like, oh my gosh, that really helped me. And I'm like, it did? <laughs> I don't even know what I said. <laughs> so Great. so I, I'm receiving it now and I'm starting to kind of cross over that hump of, you know, I don't see it. So it, you know, still kind of goes back and forth a little bit, but I am starting to see it a lot better now and realize, okay, I, I really need to put this out there because I know, truly know it's something that I need to be doing to help other people on a, on a much larger scale. So great. There's something I want to say to that, that is a teaching tool for everybody. So receiving it is great. I'm so glad that you're receiving it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be the thing that makes you do what you do though. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is I, as Mary knows me really well. So usually people are like, I'm like, I, I don't, I used to not receive it. Well, it was hard for me to receive it. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to start receiving it. 
And the reason was is because when I started out, Irene, I didn't want people's opinions of me to be the thing that made me do what I did. Mm-hmm. Because when I was doing it, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, her readings are, uh, her readings are amazing. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to let ego get into this because I've seen too many readers become egotistical about it. Mm-hmm. And then you'd get the critique, the someone who'd come in and be like, she's full of crap, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and if I paid attention to that, I would be like emotionally all over the place. Yeah. So it is important to receive it because I have, I have students now, a community now, and that recently I've gotten a few of these emails. Like, I know you don't like us when we gush over you. But this is what, and the other reason why I do that, and this is not about you, Irene, I want to use your, I mean, this is such a great conversation because it teaches people. The other thing I can't, I repel is coaches that get revered so highly that they become like a guru. And Mm -hmm. then what happens to me, there are people that I really like and respect their work, but they accept that kind of like um, admiration and I, and And what happens is I don't want to go see that coach speak because I don't want to be in the room full of people that are like, oh, how did you meet so-and-so? And And isn't so-and-so wonderful? And blah, 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 blah. Like, it bothers me. It becomes becomes cultish almost to me. Yes. Yeah. So, and that's just my opinion. So we all get to decide what we want to do, you know? And you didn't say any of that. You just gave me a doorway in to teach something that I wanted to teach. So I just want to make sure. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Great feedback. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Mary, what did you hear? And then we're going to get into the hot seat. What, what was good for you or not good for you? Go ahead. It's about believing and trusting in yourself. And it's also about, and I've been guilty of this, how you've bought programs and it's not necessarily the right process for you, for where you are. So it's almost like you put the cart, I call it putting the cart before the horse. Mm-hmm for what you're, you're starting to unpack and what you real, and maybe the order is, is actually different than for your path. Like you said, following your heart. You know, I'm really glad you said that because that comes with, I think, comparison energy sometimes. Like when I was out there and I'd be like, oh, let me hire this coach. And because this person I know is doing really, really well with them. And that's what I need right now for my business. And then it wasn't necessarily the right thing for me at the time. So I do think we tend to sometimes put the cart before the horse. And I think the most important thing is to, I think those programs are good because you just file them away for when you're ready for them. But I think it's really important to start organically owning your skill set and what it is you want to do, coming up with a service, and then really like choosing what that's going to be. Start with one thing and then move forward with it. So that's great. Um, okay, let's start. We're going to start with Irene. So I'm going to mute Mary's in a closet, which is kind of funny. Um, I have a closet. I'm setting up for that. I don't blame her. (laughs) (laughs) You guys can't see it on video. We'll probably put it on YouTube, but Mary's closet is like most people's studios apartment in Manhattan. So let me just tell you that. (laughs) Um, so usually I time it for 15 minutes. What I tell people to do now, I make them fill out questions. So I'm going to read the questions. And the reason why I have them do that is because people get into story and I don't need story a lot of the time. Sometimes people will be like, you need the backstory, you need the context, or you're not understanding what I'm saying. And that's fair. I understand that. But I like to get out of story. And it's always amazing to me how well I'll ask. We did it yesterday on um, the pod party. We do it membership. And this one woman just kept, you know, she was kind of going in circles. I'm like, what's the question? (laughs) <laughs> and it's really important to get to the question, especially when I do hot seats. So yep. um, I'm going to, and if I need context, I'm going to share that with you, but I am going to time it, even though it's just two of us, just so we're fair with time. So okay. the first question I ask is what they need coaching on right now. And this is Irene. And she said, falling back into self-sabotage. Mm-hmm. And then the second question I asked is what has been your biggest challenge with the above statement, which is what she needs coaching on. I feel a lot of resistance come up, comes up when I think about moving forward and being seen. Being seen is a huge one in this community. And it's something I really want people to own. Um, the next question was, was how, what have you tried to do to fix it? And it's very interesting because I have a lot of symbols in this particular one, which I don't think, I think it's the way it's translated. I get okay. bursts of blank. Let's do this blank. Then I shrink back years of learning about energy, healing, clearing, listening to my own guides, yet I slide back into hiding. Tell me briefly, Irene, 
what you've tried to do to fix this. So the main thing we're saying is you don't, are you mostly worried about being seen? That's a huge thing. Yes. Can't stand the attention a lot of times. So tell me a little bit about that. Like the attention from who? Anyone and everything. Um, it's, it's just sort of a, okay, I, the intention makes me uncomfortable. And it's in any situation, even like a, a birthday party. It's like, oh, I don't know how to handle this type of thing. I, the attention on me makes me super uncomfortable. Um, I've also realized lately that a lot of that has fear of just sort of any kind of retaliation, not feeling safe by having that attention. Um, I realized that when I was in the best shape of my life, I had way too much attention from men, jealousy from women. And it's like, okay, that's not safe. And then when I've had little bits of success and people say things like, oh, well, aren't you lucky? And, and my ingrained patterns from childhood are, oh, you have to work really, really hard to just get a, you know, by. So then that creates this whole, oh, lucky means I didn't work for it. Therefore I can't have it. You know, it, it's sort of that. Yeah. Twisted no, up dynamic. Sense. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. And I make notes while you talk. So that's why I'm not looking at you. Uh, okay. Where in your life do you stand in your power? I feel like I only stand in my power bits and pieces here and there when I'm helping other people. Um, you seem like you have a pretty strong personality though to me. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. So where else do you stand in your power? If a possible, if there is any place else. I think for the most part, it, it's like, I don't always feel confident, but then I see bits and pieces of myself where I, I don't really care what other people think and I'm just gonna do what I'm, I'm going to do anyway. So I think it just kind of goes forward and then it shrinks back. It, I yeah. go in and out of it. Okay. And then when you were, if, if you could do anything and everything was like, that this was gone, mm -hmm. this is what you said to me. If you could have this fixed right now, what would it look like? You said, waking up feeling excited about my day and continuing that excitement throughout my day and going to bed feeling like I actually am accomplishing something and it feels great. Mm -hmm. What would you be doing though? Like what would be the thing that you would be doing that would be so exciting? And it could be lifestyle. I believe in building a lifestyle and business. So to mm -hmm. me, it's, they're not separate because my, my work does not feel like work. So what would be the, some of the things that you would be doing that would be so frigging amazing in your day? I, my, one of my very, very favorite feelings in the whole world is when, um, I call it being on. And, um, a lot of times like when my mom was with me and we're out and about, and I just sense people and I bring them out of that space like this to where they kind of open up and they have these aha moments. And I feel absolutely amazing at the end of the day when I can see that shift in people. That is one of my favorite feelings in the world. And it feels like everything's just right when I, when I have those types of moments. So if I can have a, a lot more moments like that, regardless of what I'm doing or how to get there, that would be amazing to me to have a multiple moments through that, like that throughout the day, just listening to my intuition and kind of just gifting people what they need, whatever that looks like. What tools and techniques do you use in order to give people what they need? Listening to my intuition. I, it, it varies so much. And I think that's why I've had such a hard time in business because it's like, how do I pinpoint what I do? It just comes to me at that moment and there it is. So I've been struggling to figure out what is that? Well, you just pinpointed it. What okay. did you just pinpoint? Just following the energy. Just you said something else too. Uh, I forgot what I said. <laughs> your intuition. Yes. You said you yeah. listen mm -hmm. and then your intuition guides you. And mm -hmm. then you talk to the person and it makes sense for them. Yeah. That's your own personal brand. Is that enough for you? Or do you need to have some bells and whistles attached to that in order to do the magic that you do? I don't know that I need bells and whistles. I feel like I need more 
clarity of how to express that express because it does it how? express it in a way to where if I'm going to create business from that, how do I explain what I do? You know, hey, let me, do I, great. So, so good, Irene, the people that you've gone to that have done really great healing work or therapy work with you mm -hmm. or any kind of work, give, you don't, have to, don't say names, but give me like a sentence of what they did that helped you. What was something that they did that helped you? Honestly, just them knowing what I need. It's, I guess it's the same thing as I do. They just, they know what I need to hear at that moment. And that's what they gift. And, you know, did they see you in that moment? Yeah, they see all of it. And do they hear you in that moment? Absolutely. Do you see and hear other people? Yes. You validate them? Yes. Yeah. Great. And I open up other possibilities that they hadn't thought of. Exactly. Okay. So there's something here that you said that I want to go back to normalize my gifts. Okay. And what's fascinating about that is when we talked earlier, you said, um, it's just normal to me. It's all normal to me. It's normal to me. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is when you talked, I should have went back to this right away because this is what happens to me. Mm -hmm. When you talked about normalizing my gifts and making it normal, and then it is just normal to me, it feels to me like, let me ask you this, Irene, do you feel, and this is not about comparison. This is not about me being better than anyone else. This is about you owning what you do. Do you feel what you do for others? Is it a gift? Yes, I do now. Yes. Okay. And can it be normal and still be a gift? Yes. Can it be part of your personality and who you are and still be a gift? Yes. Okay. So what is the not safe part when people put attention on you? What does it make you feel? <sighs> I think a lot of it has to do with, I, I don't like conflict and I've been avoiding conflict pretty much this entire lifetime. So I think there's always that fear of, like you were saying, there's people that are in resistance. So it had really has nothing to do with me, but it's like, okay, you know, just chill. Let's, let's have a little peace here. It's just, you know, the, the other people getting triggered and then kind of lashing out type of thing is, is pretty much a big fear for me. So What's the worst, what would happen to you if, if all of a sudden you were helping somebody and they came back to you and, and they were like, you didn't help me and you were horrible. What would, what would be your experience of that? If you knew you gave all that you could. You know, I think that goes back to needing to feel like I'm perfect in order to have any kind of value. Great. So something I want to say, and I'm not going to be able to get to everything, obviously, because this is mm -hmm. layered work, mm -hmm. but needing to feel that you're perfect so that you're validated, mm -hmm. but the clients that you work with or the people you want to help, do you see, what do you, do you see them as, is everyone perfect because they're just no. who they are, no. but are they perfect because of who they are though? Is there anything wrong with that? I think everyone is perfectly imperfect. <laughs> perfect. Yes. It's like what Brene Brown says. Yeah. And are you the type of person that can, when you're working with somebody, really put judgments and feelings and projections of your own life aside so that you can clearly work with them on what they need? Yes. As I, long I as I'm focused good. on another person, I, it, it's as long as I'm zoned here at, with them, I don't think about any of that. I'm right. just in that moment. Okay. So tell me again about not feeling safe. If you were working with clients and they were having, they were being seen and heard like they've never been seen and heard before. And mm -hmm. you were able to clearly give them 
solutions, not, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be all solutions, just even thoughts, you know, just you yeah. writing down, like I have to be perfect. You know, you just having aha moments mm-hmm. and they were able to move forward in their life. Mm-hmm. How would that feel to you? That's that feeling that I was talking about earlier about going to bed, feeling like everything was just, just right in the world. Right. Do you have to be perfect in order to do this work? No. Do you know that in your heart and soul? Hmm. It's a challenge. It's a resistance thing for sure. There was a big struggle in my brain. Tell me about that. Um, Growing up, I think, uh, well, I know a lot of it has to do with growing up and basically my father telling me that my place is in the kitchen with my mom instead of, you know, being out there, I needed to be hidden away because I'm a girl. So. Okay. How would it feel to be able to work with other men, women? I don't want to just say one sex who has also been told that their place is in the corner and not out in life, and you were able to help them shine a light on their life? I do that in an unpaid manner already. So, you know, (laughs) and it feels good. It feels good to help people. And it feels good. It feels amazing to see that light bulb come on for them or something to shift in them. So that for me is the best feeling. So the pain that you just experienced by sharing the story about, you know, your father, that's the way he was raised this, you know, and that's how it is, but you still had an emotional experience with that. What was that for you right now? Um, just feeling like I'm never going to get there. Exactly. You know, who's holding that, who's holding that now, who's holding the ends of that rope now. That would be me. Right. And are, is it okay? Can you find self-forgiveness for the fact that this might be a struggle, but it's for a reason though? Yeah. In other words, what I'm trying to say for me with you and what I'm getting to with you is you recognizing the light inside your soul. Tell me if I'm wrong, Irene, you recognizing the light inside your soul and that you're not meant to be in the kitchen and hidden in the corner is exactly what you want to do for others is help people to recognize the light in their soul. Yes. And do you need to be healed from this in order to do the work that you desire to do? No. Do you believe that? Correct. Yes, I do. I feel you do too. Yeah. So I think that the next step is just, uh, like I said, I do it anyway. I just don't put any kind of price tag on it, but I can only do so much in a day's time because I still have to pay bills. So of course. Okay. But can you go out And start thinking about offering up your services and offer it up as donation only donation up to $25. If you can afford it, I want to help your friends. I'm working in this area. It's it, you know, if they can't afford it, or is there a certain amount that you would be okay with to start the exchange of finances? I think if it were a donation based thing and they could anything, you know, I'm not even going to reject if it's a large amount. I think it's more of a, okay, I'm putting a, a dollar amount on my value here. I don't know what to put type of thing. Okay. You so know? that's the other thing too. You just said something super important. It's mm-hmm. the dollar amount on your value. Mm-hmm. How much would you pay someone to help you see your light and finally get out and do what you love to do? <laughs> I have paid a lot of people a lot of money to figure this stuff out. So quite a bit. Right. And were you worth it to pay them to help you to figure it out? I I am worth it. Sometimes the services didn't seem so, but. (laughs) But then there were services that were, and there were services that weren't, but even the services that weren't, did you learn something about yourself with the services that weren't? What I learned from those or what sticks with me the most is that I want to make sure that I offer enough value for what I'm charging, that I don't want to just, ah, whatever. Okay. So there's two things here that I want to just address real quickly. Okay. What you put value on may be different than what the person puts value on. Yeah. 
So yes, as a business owner, I like overgiving. Mm -hmm. And some people would say like, you know, some people would be like, they, I, I've been in businesses where the person's charging 30 to 100K and they're just giving less and less and less. And they think that's, they, they value themselves because of that. I don't like that. No, that's not me for me. Yeah. But I can't get into everybody's heads of what they perceive as valuable. Right. So I stand in the value of what I offer and the dollar amount on it. And then if the person comes to me and I've, I've had this like recently, I think I had this, like, I haven't gotten this in a while because I no longer care what people think about it. Mm -hmm. And they were like, that's expensive. I'm like, that's your opinion. That's okay. Go well. That's yeah. okay. Absolutely. You have to own the value of what you offer and feel good about it. So I like what you said, but it's not, look, do I go out and do I sometimes look in the beginning of what services people are paying? When I was doing readings, what are people paying for readings and stuff like that? I did kind of do research, mm -hmm. but now it's like, this feels good to me and that's it. And if the person thinks it's too much, it's not, it, then you're not for me. Yeah. How does that feel? Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with that. I want to say one other thing. Mm -hmm. And then I want to just hear you summarize because then I want to move on to Mary. And this is really good stuff. I mean, really good. One of the biggest lessons I learned in this business, and I've taught it, and Mary probably has heard this before. Um, when people get in, and I don't think you're doing this, Irene, you did amazing. You're very clear. You're much clearer than you think. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to wait till all that's cleaned up before you get out, because that stuff is going to get more powerful and stronger and cleaned up when you work with clients, because you'll walk away from you. I do feel you're able to not put your stuff on a client. You're very clean. Yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah. And I feel like you would, if you walked away from experience where somebody was like, it wasn't, you're going to have experiences where it's like, oh, this is not, you know, whatever. But you always want to walk away going, I did everything I could. Mm -hmm. I brought everything I could to the table. So the way yeah. that I would do that when I was working was going into a session, I'm not allowed to be in there. Mm -hmm. Spirit has to, especially if I'm doing readings, coaching's a little different. It's part of me too. It's my personality. Having them work through me knowing that I did everything I could, that's it. How the person receives me is none of my business. Spirit put us two together for a reason. And if that person needs to walk out the door and hate me mm -hmm. because they need to be empowered in some place, then that's okay. But the other thing I did, Irene, is I would talk to my guys. If somebody came into my room and they were like horrible, I would go to my guys. And I'd be like, what the heck? Why did you send me that person? <laughs> and they would tell me what I needed to learn about myself. And I'd say, okay, got it. Learning it. Don't ever send me that person again. Yeah. And I know, and I got to tell you from Mary's in next level living, she knows the groups that's in there and in membership, my groups, they're, they're phenomenal people. And when a riff raptor type of person comes in, mm -hmm. especially now we see it a lot sooner. We're not like letting it goodbye. You yeah. do not belong here. So yeah. I just wanted to offer that up to you because when you put boundaries in your business, the way you need to, you're going to feel safe. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. So I, I don't want to leave you with me just talking your ear off. Is there anything you'd like to share or anything like what's your next action step, anything at all? Um, so I actually am sitting down to take some notes to create a course to help people. Um, my friend calls me on a, pretty regular basis. And, um, I suddenly had this, I, I've been thinking about doing a course for a while and I'm like, I don't know what to do a course on, you know, help multiple people. And she called recently and was asking for my help. And all of a sudden I got this information come in to give to her. And I was like, that's the course there. We have it. So that's kind of what I'm working on. Just sort of digital it's, it's there. If people want it. It's not direct on me per se. And that feels really good. And then it kind of frees up time to focus on readings or whatever else is going on too. So that's kind of my next thing. Here's my feeling about that. And you get mm -hmm. to take it or leave it. Um, okay. it would be really great for you to grab a small group of people, have them pay you something and teach mm -hmm. some of that course live. So okay. you can feel it out, record it. Okay. And feel it because the thing about digital courses, like I have digital courses, but you still have to drive traffic to the digital courses. Okay. You're still part of it. But when people buy my courses that I, if they're just full on digital, I'm like, wow, I celebrate that all the time because they're getting something. I think digital courses are amazing. I love them. Mm -hmm. 
not only for me, I like taking them because I take them on my own time. Mm -hmm. But I also know as a digital course creator, there is work that goes into that. But I think that this might be really cool for you to get like, hey, I'm just doing this brainstorming thing. We're going to pay $25 for the day or what for two hours, whatever. Everybody come in and let's do this. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not one of those coaches that also believes you have to have monetary. In the beginning, when I was doing readings, I did them for free. And Mm -hmm. I still felt an exchange of energy because people valued my time. It wasn't like Mm -hmm. people didn't show up. Yeah. And I felt the exchange was great because I was getting experience and I didn't yeah. mind it. Yeah. So great. Great work. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. All right. Now, Mary. And what I would say for you, Irene, while you're listening to Mary and anybody who's listening to the podcast, think about your own business questions and uh, think about it multi, like listen to us multidimensionally. When I say listen to multidimensionally, I'm saying things with words, but I'm also saying things with energy. I'm saying things with feeling. You may have visions. You may see something. When I say something, you may feel something. You may sense something. You may smell something. That's listening multidimensionally. So listen for that for your own solution and see what hits you because your own memory may come up of something and you're like, oh my goodness, it wasn't what she said. It just brought up something. So it's so good. All right, Mary, let me read your question. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Okay, so Mary's is, what does she need coaching on right now? Business mindset, which is so good because everybody needs a business mindset. Her biggest challenge has been being able to work towards my business while taking care of where I am right now. So Mary's got a lot going on where she's cleaning up her mother's estate and doing a lot of moving, which a lot of people may relate to that, right? They've got a lot on their plate. Like uh, Irene talked about paying the bills, things like that. Um, what have you tried to do to fix it? fix it. Very focused on taking care of presence, present business, but don't want to put myself off for later, which I agree. If you could have this fixed right now, her answer was concrete steps moving into a business now that I can put into practice where I am. So Mary, after listening to what I said to Irene, did something come up for you that may have shifted these questions or are you still in a place of not having ideas of concrete steps? Well, I recognize I definitely have the issue connected with being seen and being heard. It's She's like in a, a closet one. right and now I, too. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and I recognize that, you know, with my mother's things, you know, like the, the, just simple things like um, I think one pr- program I took was, oh, well, you need to go get pictures of yourself. I don't even have any pictures of myself. And so all of a sudden I've had all these steps where I realized, oh, I, I'm not there yet to step into that. And I also realized that maybe some of it, I just need to be actually doing it and not being attached to what the results will be because ultimately it'll still be leading you to where you, you, you need to be. Okay, a couple of things you said that I love. Um, I love, I have to go to this one first. I did a program where they said you have to get pictures of yourself. And this is exactly why I'm starting to verbalize what I teach. Because I know those, go pay this photographer, get those professional photos, blah, 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 blah. And that freezes someone in their tracks where they're like, no, maybe they don't want to have pay for the photographer right now. They're not ready to, they're not at that level of business. Or two, they're not comfortable with pictures of themselves yet. And what I would suggest with something like that, Mary, is don't do pictures of yourself then. Put up pictures of flowers, put up pictures of cleaning out your mother's closet and talk about, you know, I love the work I do. I feel I'm an an incredibly gifted, intuitive medium to help people. Like I want to help people, but the truth is I'm not always comfortable with showing who I am just yet. Because it is true when you go to a website, you do want to see pictures of the person to connect with them. Maybe it's pictures of you gardening. Maybe it's pictures of you just out. Maybe it's a picture of you watching a sunset or you just showing the sunset. But what I want people to do is not deny because you know how many spiritual people are going to look at that and go, oh my goodness, I feel the same way. I need to talk to this woman. Just because you're not healed in that area does not mean you can't help other people. How does it feel when I say, and then I'll talk about the other thing. How does that feel when I say that to you? That feels really good because it's also about getting comfortable with the medium, you know, taking pictures and posting and 
in, in a different way, you know, interacting with it. That's another thing that I, I really want people to do is you can't do a false Facebook post or Instagram post if it's not, if it's feeling forced. We can only do what we feel good with. So Mary, if I was to say to you, I want you to post something tomorrow, which I keep forgetting to give you guys your business tip today, since we're working on spirit and soul. But did you do, did you get to do the spirit of soul meditation yet? You may have not gotten a chance to do it yet. Have you? Oh yes, it was awesome. Okay, great. If you were to take the meditation, this is a meditation I did in Next Level Living. If you were to take that meditation and write a post and add a picture to that medit to your experience from it, would you be able to write a post about that and put a picture to it? Not about of yourself, but a picture. Yes. What would the picture be of? It'd probably be nature. And how would it feel? Would that feel daunting or exciting how would it what would it feel I don't want to put words in your mouth it makes me feel connected can you trust that being your organic authentic self would create be you would be able to create a business from that yes are you sure yes okay Tell me what you're feeling. I want to go to the next thing, but tell me what you're feeling right now. Well, one thing I've really been working on is like intuitively, I'll get pieces of information and, and in the past, I've sort of, I've, I've shut it off. Mm. And so me, it's just like paying attention. Um, I'm, I'm working on another space and I, I had a whole bunch of carpenter bees are in there. So I realized, well, I have to do a little bit of work, but I had all these wonderful ideas coming in just as a step you know. What was one of like, those ideas? It, well, it's connected to the session yesterday when you were talking about it's all about the table, how you set up the table and it's a place to work and create. And so that's where I was coming from. It's like, oh, if I'm setting up a space, I'm going to bring what I want to bring into it. Yeah. There's something else with you, Mary, that you're saying that's important to me is not everybody wants the rah, rah, rah leader to teach them. So your quiet way, you're very um, nurturing. You're always very nurturing, always very accepting, always extremely sweet. You're such a great listener. You're not judgy at all. Um, you show up, you say very powerful things, especially when we were doing soul sessions and everything and next level living, you say very powerful things to people. Do you believe that what you have to offer and what I've witnessed from you, that there would be people out there that would really desire that type of teaching? Yes. Okay. What is it that you ultimately over, want? Go ahead, sweetie. What? And I think it was overcoming what Irene was talking about, that you've sort of created these walls that aren't really you built the block up that it's just a matter of saying, okay, I'm going to take the step, take one step, take the next step and start building on that, you know? Yeah. You know, um, something that Irene said and that you're kind of adding to is we, many of us, when we were younger, we knew inside our hearts and souls, and you've heard me say this, that we were meant to do something really grand and great, but we were told to get that, but we, we, we were told that we weren't or we sensed that other people were jealous of us, of our light, so we dimmed it. And it's not okay to hide it anymore. Here's my question for you though. What is it ultimately right now, if I would say, Mary, you just tell me who you wanna work with and I'm gonna open that magical door over there and they're gonna come in, who would it be? What would you help that person with and what would they be struggling with? Well, I see it as using tools for transformation and getting like a conversation that sparks something unique from them. Tell um, me a little bit more like about that. Instance, Go ahead. Like, for instance, I've really liked um, doing like card readings. I don't like that someone's coming in and saying, oh, you're supposed to tell me about it because it's not to me, it's a conversation. It's like if you d pull a tarot card and it's the star. Well, what does the star mean to you? And it's really going a whole different, you know, level of it. Okay. I like this. So do you believe that 
if you were to offer readings where it was more of a conversation and not telling people when they're going to meet their the, the guy of their dreams and win the lottery and all those other questions, do you believe there's people out there that would love to come in and have a conversation with you and work with the tools and be guided? Yes. You do? Okay. What is stopping you from, and I agree with you because you know how I am. You know, people come to me with those questions. I'm like, leave, I'm not your leader. What is stopping you from starting those conversations and inviting those types of people in to these conversations? I think I've sort of, part of me has been in judgment and, and scared of what people think. And a lot of times for me, it's been when people think a certain way, I really, I put the wall up and I, I protect my heart pretty much which shuts it all down, what's coming in. Yeah. Okay. That's such an honest, great answer. So are you also one of the people that can tell what people think about you, even if they're not verbalizing it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mary, what is your talent? Well, one thing I've sort of, shied away from, but it's just very much a part of me. I'm very analytical, which sometimes isn't so good with this work, but it's also the ability to bring in lots of information and to look at it differently. You know, like like numbers, I love numbers because I was an engineer previously in my background. And, but but it's, I think it's the information and and even with my mother's dealing, that's it's the ability for me to learn a lot of new things and to be taking care of things that it, would have felt that still feel a little bit uncomfortable, but I know I'm making good choices. So that's beautiful. I love that. So if that was you, like, I don't really love the word coach anymore because I think coaches have been like, mm. but let's say coaching. So because you have this incredible talent where you're able to take apart information and put it into solution and um, really help to like take a messy situation and probably really help people see it, right? Like, how I just put words in your mouth and I didn't mean to. If someone's coming to you and they're struggling with seeing their future and they're about to leave their job and retire and they have a little bit of cash and they, they just want a new start, how would you help? Like they're like, I want to move and I know there's something I'm meant to be doing. I'm just not sure what it is and I'm on a spiritual path. How would you help that person? I think it's providing. Don't think, tell me, them, feel it. Being open to all possibilities. How would you, what would you, knowing, how would you do that with them? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I keep doing that to you. I think it's like step, you're opening the door and stepping through it and, and overcoming that, that unknown. How and would it, you it might be some, Go ahead. I keep doing that to you. I'm so sorry, honey. I think with money, people get get worried about not having enough money. So it's being able to say that you don't need a lot of money to be doing something that you would love to connect with. And to me, part of it is connecting in with someone's story because sometimes it's a story from the past that's connecting to the now and the future. Okay, so if I came, I love this. If I came to you and I said, you just said all of that, which is great. How are you gonna help me? How are you gonna show that to me? What kind of action steps are you gonna give me? Some of it I think could be almost like a, a questionnaire where it's going to the next level of someone's thinking. Like for instance, it might be connected to health. So it might be something as simple as, as building good habits each day that are making you feel better and feeling more energy to be doing what you wanna do. And I think like, like you said, someone building a practice coming at, to me, it would be what's the, what's the small step that you could do that makes you feel good about it. Not necessarily getting hung up on the big idea that you have down the road. I agree with that. So what if I said to you, yeah, but I just don't know what that little habit is. What can I do, Mary? I don't know what my little habit is that I can do to make me feel better. She just froze. You can turn off your video, honey. That might help. Okay. 
So I'll wait till Mary comes back. The reason why I'm doing this with Mary is I want her to verbalize her sweet spots, what she's great at, because I've seen her do it on calls. And here she comes. Great. So did you hear my question, honey? I think it, the internet cut out. <laughs> right. So let me give you my question. So you just said all that to me and I'm going to say to you, Mary, yeah, but I don't know what my little habit is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Can you tell me what my little habit can be? Or can you help me find a little habit? I think it's providing the key to know that someone can unlock it, but they're creating a block in front of it. So help me to understand what that block is. How are you going to help me to understand what that block is? Um, maybe have them show, have a discussion, like what is their day like? Are you going to use any cards to help me find things? Yes. Okay. How do you feel right now? It sounds ex exciting and a little bit of chills. So, you know, what I really want for you, Mary is, and I feel you have a whole group of people and membership and next level living. I really want you to take two people and I want you to work with them, but I want you to have an idea and I can help you with this of what that session is going to look like. I want you to think about all the tools and techniques that you may use. Um, so let me ask you this. If you, if you were going to, if, if you're going to go and talk to somebody in membership and, and they want help from you. What tools or techniques would you use right away to try to help them? I think writing is a big piece, like with the journaling. Um, intentions, I think that's very powerful, like statements of what you're intending to do. Um, you could have a small meditation, because I think that's about being grounded is a big piece of it. Okay. So what I want you to think about, and this is so good, is what that session would look like and what you would bring to the table. Now, part of what I think happens for you is you work with the person where they're at, which is okay. But I want you to be, I want you to, and you tell me what you think about this in Next Level Living. I want you to think about, okay, I'm gonna work with somebody for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you decide on the time. I'm gonna have them come in and I'm gonna pull a card first. We're gonna have a conversation about the card and then we're gonna talk about it. You decide, I'm just giving you ideas. Then we're gonna talk about the particular issue we have and then we're gonna get them with a solution. I want them to walk away with an action oriented step or whatever it is. So I want you, cause what I think is happening is, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but you're very much in your head and I need to grant, you know what she's, okay. And I want you to bring it into experience. And you've got an incredible group of people that you can practice on. How does that make you feel? That's good. Okay. Like you said, I really feel like it's just about getting in and start doing it and start, like you said, starting to feel like what feels right and what doesn't feel right. And sometimes Mary, for me personally, I know this, going in prepared is gonna help you to feel more confident. So when, when I first started doing phone readings, I didn't know how that was gonna be because I never did phone readings before. So my guide said to me, okay, and I didn't use tarot anymore. I didn't need tarot. And they said, okay, so before you do the phone reading, you're going to shuffle the cards, pull three cards, keep them face down. And if for any reason during the phone reading, you don't know what to say because you're not getting information, you'll turn over the cards and start doing a reading. So they set me up with these things so that I, I couldn't fail. You know, they made sure of it. They gave me little techniques and tools to, and I didn't need, a lot of times I didn't need the cards. And then I turned the cards over at the end just to see and give the reading. And I'd be like, oh my goodness, it was right there. So I want you to come up with a little bit of an agenda for what you're going to take the person through. I want you to try it and then you'll let me know how it goes. Okay. So you, part of what you said, and I know time is up, concrete steps moving into a business now that I can put into practice where I am. Do you feel that this is a concrete step to start with? Yes. Is it, a, is it, you know, to be honest with me. Okay, let me just ask you this. Do you have any other questions or do you have anything you want to say? Well, it's a wonderful step because it's just about, it's just, it's doing it. It's not getting tied into, oh, I need to create a website first or, oh, I need to create a brand or all these other things that I've sort of put, up to not doing, you know. 
So great, Mary. I love that. And you know what else you can do? And I've seen people do this is you can do an overall reading for a group. You can be like, you know what? I have the syllabus here. I have the curriculum. I'm going to just do a mood reading for, for today. And you could write a whole like, yeah, I pulled the star card and this is what it means. And da, 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 da. now I want you to go and journal and, and, and go out in nature and stick it. And I feel like it's going to lead to so much more excitement for you. Wonderful. Good. Great job. Okay. So now what I want for the two of you as we end is I want you to give, tell me something you're going to do in the next 24 hours. You don't make, oh, that cat is so pretty. Irene is <laughs> so cute. What a sweetie. Something that you're going to do in the next 24 hours. It does not have to be huge because remember we have progress pods. So, you know, like a tiny little step, we do progress pods. You're not in membership, right, Irene? No, it's okay. I just didn't know if you were in, if you were in any of my programs so that I'd talk about stuff you wouldn't know. So we have these progress pods where people meet weekly and they do tiny little things so that they can see the goals reached. So I want to know something that you both are going to do in the next 24 hours that is going to, and, and please, here's the thing I want to say to everybody. You guys were great today, by the way. Thank you so much for your transparency, your vulnerability. You're going to help so many people with these questions. Like this was really a fun conversation. I'm actually realizing the next call we have seven people on. It's going to be too many people. I'm going to have to figure it out. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, what I want people to realize is sometimes we think the action-oriented step has to be related to business. It doesn't. It could be, I'm just going to take a 30-minute walk and I'm going to meditate on this as I walk. Or I'm going to go listen to that podcast that I wanted to listen to about business. Listening to podcasts about business is actually very good because it could excite you and it could be creative. Well, at least for me, it's very creatively stimulating, especially Mary, you said something so powerful, which is why I want to do this work. It's not about getting the website. It's not about getting the pictures. It's getting grounded in what we talked about today. And then all that stuff comes because you want to do it. You're like, oh my goodness, I totally want to do this now because now I have something to say. So, okay, what is the thing that you're going to do, Irene, in the next 24 hours? Oh, you're muted. I always tell people I'm not that psychic. Okay. Uh, the thing that I'm going to do in the next 24 hours is um, writing is where I get the most clarity. And I tend to neglect it when I get too busy otherwise. Um, but the other part of that is gathering the info that I've already written to these friends that ask questions and gathering it in one place because that's where I get tripped up a lot of times too is that there's all this information and I need to organize it yeah yeah because that's gonna you're gonna see your 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 uh course through that content yes yeah yeah great what tool are you going to use to gather that information uh, so I'm actually going to put it on my computer in one space because I have it in Facebook and I have it in text and I have it here and there. Um, and then the other part of that is a friend that just asked for help too, that I figure you had said to practice with the group live first. So I'm going to contact him and a couple other people that have asked me for help and just kind of start bringing it together and putting it all on my computer, so it's not notes here, there, and the everywhere. So, so use. Um, with, do you ever use Google Drive? I have it, and I have not utilized it enough. But I recently started getting back to that. Okay, and you can use Word or whatever you use, but definitely use something that it's not like in all those something that makes you feel really that you can organize everything. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't think about adding it to there. So, thank you for that. It could be that it could be, um, it depends on how you, how you study like Trello boards, people like, I like Asana, we use that, but when I'm organizing material for courses, I usually use Google drive. Cause then I have a folder and I can have different folders and then I can use sheets versus, you know, regular documents and okay. then it's all in one place and stuff. Okay, good. But, it, but, but here's one of those things that I'm teaching you. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work for you, don't spend hours trying to learn that. Just do what you know. 
Yeah. Because then you'll be like, oh, I got to learn Google. Oh, I can't. Google Drive isn't good. For, oh, I got to, you know, and then <laughs> then here we are again. Right? And then I don't get it done. Yeah. Yes. And we don't want to do that either. <laughs> so we, I'd rather you use what you're comfortable with. Don't learn something new. So actually, I'm going to okay. change my direction. Great. Okay. What about you, Mary? Have fun taking a picture. <gasps> Have fun taking a picture. But here, I'm going to give you something else. <laughs> but then write about it. Yes. Okay. And put it in next level living or in membership or both. Okay. Good. All right. You guys did great. So um, I hope that everybody enjoyed this on the podcast. I would love to hear what you think, because this is definitely more of what I want to teach. If you're interested in next level living, you can go to marilynaloria.com forward slash next. Um, there may be an application process at the time of this recording. There isn't, but not just anybody can get into that group. So we're probably going to do a little bit of an application process. So go to marilynaloria.com forward slash next. You can read about it. And if you're interested in joining, I would say email me, care at marilynaloria.com. And then um, please rate, review, and subscribe and share this podcast if you enjoyed. And thank you so much for being here with me at Who Can It Be Now? And I will talk to you next week.